you have the punies, yes, which I feel like bred out of conversations, uh, observations with your with your girls. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Maybe maybe even their little cousins. Yeah. Tell me, how did it happen for you? Because yeah. I would imagine a podcast. Uh, uh, was a natural fit, but not the first thought. No, not the first thought. But you know, it's like, you know, as a parent, you try to figure out ways to teach your children without being preachy. Mm -hmm. You know, because like me, my, my kids just tune me out after a while. Yeah, right. that, yeah, no, we know, you gotta work hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah cool, cool, cool. Know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, hit me with that. Right. Right. And so you wanna stay away from the yeah, yeah, yeah syndromes, you know? Um, and so I was inspired by the Sandlot. I was inspired by the Peanuts, which are both family traditions for us. Mm -hmm. You know, Fourth of you, July, we always watch the Sandlot. Fourth you're a Sandlot? Fourth of July, every Fourth of July, barbecue burgers, watch the sand line. <laughs> What's then, the line? Give me your go-to line. Uh, Do you have one? I'm putting you on the spot. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Had a couple good ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the Great Bambino, the Sultan of Swat, right? <laughs> Yeah, but my wife hits me a lot, but she tells me all the time, she goes, you're killing me small. You're killing me small? Yeah, she hits me with that all the time. If I, you know, if I try to take a picture, right. you, know, you know how you get uh -huh. you know, take a picture, and I show, show the picture, she just looks at you, you're killing me small. You're killing me. You're killing me small. You get no, so, you get no play. Yeah, no, zero. So, Sandlot, and then the Peanuts. Okay. And I was thinking, okay, well, we need some more content like that. We need sports content. Mm -hmm. And then when I watched the Peanuts, it was like, oh, I'm going to just combine those two things. And I already had... Um, BB's character, BB LaBelle, mm -hmm. um, already written out. I had created a bunch of short stories for her, and then I had Puny Pete written out. And I created a bunch of short stories for him as independent characters. Right. And then it just hit me just to put them together and um, create this series. And I was thinking like an animated series. Um, but then it kind of struck me that podcast is probably the best space to do that um, because we can play the children's imaginations mm -hmm. because it's something that like in kids' content, everything is generally spelled out for them. Mm -hmm. You know, and we tend to go for really short form content because we believe kids don't have the attention span to sit there for long periods of time. And I just don't believe that to be true. Yeah. So I figured the best way to do that is to anchor it in sports. Yeah. Because even if you listen on the radio, right, if, I cre if you have a character that you're kind of connected with already, right. we gotta right. do that quickly, right? And then you say, okay, it's the bottom of the ninth inning, you know, two outs, man on third. They can see it. Done, gotcha, you wanna know what's gonna happen. Yeah, 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 Right, so that's the hook. And you have the two announcers that are the lens into the world. They're providing all the details, they're setting the stakes, and they're banter back and forth. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, that's how it came to be. And so, at any point were you like, I'm Kobe Bryant, basketball legend, now podcast producer? I mean, were you ever like, is this really, is this me? Or were you like, nah, yeah. let's try it and let's- No, no, because I've always been a kid at heart. Like always, you know, Disney, um, Harry Potter. I mean, I've always been a kid at heart. And right. I think it's important to not lose that. I mean, we spoke to that a lot at Deer Basketball with mm -hmm. Glenn and John Williams is that the hardest thing we can do as people is as we grow older to protect and to keep that childlike innocence. Yeah. We have to fight for that. And um, and you know, I have a, still have a childlike imagination, man. So I was really, really excited. My biggest fear was like, man, is this, I hope this thing doesn't suck, man. I'm like, <laughs> you know, cause you don't, it's like when you play sports, you play basketball, I hope it's like, this thing doesn't suck. seriously, like you play basketball, the ball goes in a hoop, you right. win or you don't, right? Right. Like it's, it's not obje objectivity. Yes, man. Like, so with this, I'm sitting there and I'm laughing. I'm like, am I the only one that's going to be laughing at this stuff? Like this? <laughs> did you play it for your girls? Did you play I it? I did. I did. And they loved it. Right. And so okay. I was like, oh, I feel better. I feel better. And I go down, lay down, you know, to go to sleep at night. I'm like, did they gas me up though? Maybe they're the only ones that are gonna enjoy it though. <laughs> Man, I gotta go back and check it again. Let me re-edit. And I'm looking, I say, no, I think this is, I think this is okay. Right. Is it? Nah, this is the best we can do, so just send it out. <laughs> so what, did, the, did, did the Emmy, did the Oscar, did that give you some confidence? I would imagine that that would give you no. some. <laughs> None? No, because every project's new. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, we, we do Dear Basketball, and now here you're on to the next project, and what we did in Dear Basketball can't help you here. Right. <laughs> like, no, yeah, it's a whole different thing. Yeah, yeah, it becomes even worse. All right, you won an Oscar, but this podcast is trash. <laughs> Maybe like, you just is, stick to the animated yeah, shorts. Yeah, just do that. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I know you got a book coming out, Mamba Mentality, yeah. the Mamba Mentality, where you talk about your approach, your training, um, your thought mentality to in basketball. Yeah. But that the Mamba mentality kind of started like a hashtag, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, just how for did, fun. How did that become now 
Like, I mean, it's like an alter ego. It's like an extension yeah. of you. Yeah, social media, man, it's just kind of, they took it and just ran with it. And uh, it became something a lot bigger than I ever anticipated it being in yeah. terms of um, uh, somewhat of an ideology of how to live. Yeah. And constant curiosity. And, and uh, How would you define Mamba? Well, uh, Mamba himself, the, that the character for Mamba was to help me get into character for when I played basketball. Mm. Yeah, you because know, there's a difference between Kobe the person mm -hmm. and then Kobe when I was performing. You know, at home I can be a human jungle gym with my kids mm -hmm. and be a teddy bear. But now when I step into Staples Center, I got to lock in, right? And the Mamba mentality became something of a philosophy to live by. Like in everything that you do, be present. Mm -hmm. What I'm doing at this moment is the most important thing that I'm doing at this moment in mm -hmm, time. Mm -hmm. When you have that understanding, uh, you create things with great care. Yeah. When you create things with great care, they tend to have great quality. Kobe, your whole energy just shifted yeah. when I mentioned Mamba. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, cause I, I, I think about, I mean, you, what you say is, is serious for you. That's not yeah. just something you're, that's not a character you're putting on. That's not no. a, a, a sales gimmick. Like that's actually, just to mention that for you, you hold your energy yeah. in a different space. You, you talk different, the whole deal. Yeah, no, it's, it's you know, I lock in, you know, yeah. and, it, and, it's, and it's certainly there for us. Like when I played, mm -hmm. it was there. But even now, you get into the studio, we get into writing, we get to editing, it's the same shift. Yeah. You have to pay attention to every little beat, you know, the space between words, right? What's the rhythm? What's mm -hmm. the cadence of the podcast, right? And you got to go back and review things over and over. See, so make sure things on the ear are, aren't catching. If mm -hmm. something's catching, oh, something's wrong. Something's right. wrong. So every little beat, when the music starts, when it ends, you know, every little cue, and, and that's what Mamba mentality is, is to really approach things with great, great, great care. You surprised me in the book. I mean, you go from, I mean, everything from your relationships to refs and conversations and your approach there to tap dancing. Yeah. To help with the ankle injury. Yes. First, for folks that don't know, <laughs> tap dancing? Yeah, tap dancing. I still have my tap dance shoes. I bet you do. I do. I do, but it's important to think outside the box, yeah. right? There, there are a lot of things in different disciplines and different industries that we can utilize and we can learn from, mm -hmm. right? It's important to not, to not limit ourselves, not limit our ability to learn. Yeah. And so I was having severe ankle trouble. I mean, this is after the Indiana finals and my ankle was torn to shreds. And so the conventional way of strengthening the ankle was fine, but I was only hitting, uh, um, the, the maximum areas. It wasn't hitting the little intrinsic muscles mm -hmm. in the feet that I need, needed to work on. And I was doing research and tap dance, I was like tap dancing. That has to, I mean, that's the best way to strengthen your feet. Yeah, because right. why wouldn't you think tap? Well, I mean, you know, yeah. it's, it's, you know, no, research. Yeah. You sit, I sit at home and I obsessively research about this stuff. And I'm like, you oh, tap dancing I'm is I'm tap. Yeah, here. that was it. And so Did I anybody look tap. at you like, mm, or they well, already know once you're in that zone. Well, no, because that wasn't really known about me back then. I was only 22 years old. Right. So when I went into the dance studio and I had my tap dancing shoes, <laughs> it was all these like little kids, like 10 year old kids. Right. They're like, mom, he's really tall. He goes, that's Kobe Bryant. What is he doing? Are you tap dancing? I'm like, I'm tap dancing. I'm tap dancing. You know how to tap dance? I said, I didn't say that. <laughs> I'm here to learn. I didn't say that, but I'm here, I'm, to, I'm here to learn. I'm here to learn. <laughs> Just like everybody here, I'm, I'm, I'm here to learn. But those little 10 year old kids were like. And I was I'm like. I'm saying. <laughs> tap, yeah. but tap, but it tap. It was the most frustrating thing ever. Because mentally, I'm telling myself, I'm telling, okay, my feet are going to do this.